Uh, this module will cover the basics of phlebotomy. And uh, it's a nice section, of course, there's a couple key things to go over. One, um, we're only doing online training. So of course, if you feel that you don't have the necessity to be able to do phlebotomy from this, it's very, very easy to take an online program uh, as well as in conjunction with a real life program. Uh, one of the best sites that we recommend using, it's called phleb.com. So it's, tip, it's literally p-h-l-e-b.com. And it's a nice website where you can get uh, phlebotomy training. Um, in this course, you know, one of the things that I found because I've been training now for about four years, play the rich fibrin in North America, a lot of dentists seem to be a little bit concerned about doing these blood draws. And I remember when I was in school, uh, I was taught by my supervisor and the way that he kind of got me over the hump or quote unquote fear of doing this was he just said, look, this is something that people learn at 20 years old in nursing school. Once you do a couple of these procedures, you know, it'll be totally comfortable. And I thought more about it. And if you think about it logically, it's much, much more difficult to do all the injections that we do in the oral cavity when compared to doing a little blood draw. Okay, so the real thing here is just get started. Okay, practice on each other a few times and then get comfortable doing it. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the vein light, which I have right here and kind of its use. It's a very, very helpful tool and we still use it to this day. And we'll go over kind of a step-by-step -step guideline here. All of the steps will be available in the online program. So you'll be able to download them with the images and from there you'll be able to utilize them. So here's just the steps uh, in general form. So of course, again, since we're working without anticoagulants, we gotta be fast. We gotta prepare all the equipment. The centrifuge has to be set, programmed, open, ready to go. Um, and then typically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the tourniquet, tie it three inches above the elbow. We're gonna use a vein light, use the vein finder, wipe with alcohol, wait for drying, and then enter the vein between 15 and 30 degrees. I'm gonna show a video uh, that you guys will be able to see where we're going to go over the entire protocol, uh, which will make it easy for you guys to follow and see kind of the steps. Now, again, when we look at the arm, okay, typically point your thumb towards the outside. You're going to have two main veins. There's going to be the cephalic vein, which is the bigger one that you can see here, and the basilic vein, which is a little bit smaller. We always try and draw from the cephalic vein, and it's the bigger one. Like I mentioned, you can find it with the vein light. Everybody's different, okay? So anatomy is different in every single one of your patients, absolutely. Of course, it's easier to draw from skinny people because there's a smaller layer of fat, essentially. In larger patients, it's a little bit more challenging and that's where the vein light becomes very, very useful. This vein light, the way it works, these things are typically uh, between two to $300. When you click the light, essentially what happens is you can actually see the vein. So they light up, might be difficult to see in the camera there, but you can really shadow and follow the veins around and then you, we can use it. So I'm gonna do uh, a video in the video I've used it as well as later on throughout the day, I'm gonna do a live demo where I'm gonna use the vein light as well. It's a very, very uh, useful piece of equipment and I highly recommend it. Okay, so here's a couple of images. So again, tourniquet is tied three inches above the elbow. And then we're gonna use the vein light and the vein light, we're gonna locate uh, the vein here. So you can see with the vein light, the veins located there in the center. Afterwards, we're always going to wipe with alcohol without question, okay? And we're gonna wait for that to dry. After that procedure, typically we're gonna take a Band-Aid and just put it on our glove. And the reason why we do this is just to be ready uh, for the blood draw. It just makes the step a little bit easier. So sometimes this is a good step because it reminds you Take a Band-Aid out, get it on your glove, get it ready to go because you don't want to be inside the needle and then calling for your assistant to go find a Band-Aid somewhere. Okay, once you've entered inside the vein, the nice thing about using butterfly needles is you start to see backflow. And so what you see in red here is a little bit of blood that comes out that signifies that you've actually entered into the vein. If you don't see this red, you're not in the vein, okay? So until you see the red, Okay, and you can literally go into the vein, into the vein, into the vein. The minute you enter the vein, you start to see a little bit of blood backflow. Okay, and then uh, you know that you're there, you put the bandaid on. Always enter the vein about 15 to 30 degrees, bevel facing upwards. Okay, and we'll go over that in the video. But whenever you look at uh, these butterfly needles, they're sided. Okay, there's a little hole, so the bevel, and it's either facing upwards or downwards. You always wanna make sure the bevel is facing upwards and enter at 15 to 30 degrees. Once you've done that, Band-Aid goes over top, 
And then essentially you just start collecting with your tubes. So then you go one, two, three, four. As we talked about in module two, okay, the white tubes are meant for the liquid PRF. You always draw the white tubes first. And the reason why you draw the white tubes first is because they don't clot as fat, fast. They're made for liquid. So if I have to draw, let's say for instance, six tubes, if I draw two white ones first and then they're sitting there and I keep going, then a red one, red one, red one, red one, by the time I'm done these six tubes, that first tube has been sitting there for 90 seconds. Now what would I rather have? A white tube that doesn't clot very fast or a red tube, okay? If I had a red tube that I drew first, it would have started clotting and then when I put it in the centrifuge, it doesn't separate the layers as well. So always remember, white tubes first, then red tubes. Okay, so here I am drawing the tubes. When you're done, always, always, always remember, take off the tourniquet, okay? Tell your patient to open their fist, remove the needle and press the puncture area. Another little piece of trick that I always say, uh, especially with these guys right here, I can go over it right now when we look at this, okay? Bevel's always facing upwards, as I mentioned. One thing that I see is, let's say this is the butterfly needle. Always enter 15 to 30 degrees. When you're about to remove this, don't push down on the defect site, let's call it a defect, and pull out. Because what happens is as you're pulling this, and if you apply pressure here, it's actually a little bit painful. Okay, it feels like you're almost pulling a sword out of somebody's arm, okay? What you wanna do is you pull out and then you push down in two separate steps. So pull out, push down. Now the nice thing with these butterfly needles here, these are from Griner. Um, they have a safety feature. So there's two little buttons here on the side. You can click on them and then you click that up and then safety, okay? Now that, the needle's not going anywhere, okay? So that's a nice little safety feature that you can use uh, with respect to that system. So again, when you're done, needle comes out, hand down, okay? You put them immediately into the centrifugation device. You start your spin cycle. Remember, you got 90 seconds, okay? So it's quite important. So standard equipment that we have for phlebotomy is going to include, uh, we always use a vein light. It's uh, very, very useful to find the veins. We have our butterfly needle here. We have our alcohol white pad, and of course we have the tourniquet, okay? So uh, first things first, what you'll typically do is you'll browse the arm um, and try and locate that vein. So for Carlos, um, he's got a nice one that's right here. Um, it'll be a little tricky to see from back there, but anyways, I've spotted it. Once you've spotted it, there's a few things that you can do. Of course, you can ask uh, Carlos to make some fists to try and get that vein, and you can do a little bit of uh, tapping to desensitize slightly. Uh, in this case, here won't be necessary. The tourniquet, we always tie typically three inches above. Okay, so Carlos has probably got the biggest arms I've ever had to draw from, so this is fitting quite tight. So then you can see, and you can actually feel that vein that's popping out a little bit, and you can ask him to do a couple pumps. Um, with the butterfly needle, okay, as we went over, uh, bevel is always facing upwards okay, when we're doing this. When we draw, we always draw the white tubes first, followed by the red tubes. So I'll go ahead and get that all ready. I'll probably put it right here just so it's closer to me. And of course, with the band-aid, we always get it ready uh, to put over. What I typically do with the band-aid is I'll actually take it out of the package uh, and just put it on my glove so that it's ready to go. just makes life a little bit easier put it right here and we just let it hang there so that we're ready. So of course we have to uh, sterilize the area. So just wipe with the alcohol pad. I'm just gonna write right here. When you do this step here, you always have to make sure that it's dry, okay? Because if you enter with the butterfly needle right now, it'll be a little bit painful. Now with these, the butterflies, the wings always go downwards, okay? And bevel is always facing upwards. So when we're ready to do this, now that it's dry, we'll refine that vein. Okay, so I see it right there. Okay, we're entering at 15 to 30 degrees. Okay, so once we've entered into the vein, you can see that there's a little bit of black backflow there, so I can see that we're now entered, and I'll take this band-aid and I'll put it over top. Okay, just to secure the area a little bit. Now what I'll do is, one at a time, we'll start drawing the tubes so we can see that they're filling and we'll draw it to the appropriate levels. Okay, so Carlos is a healthy individual. Let's 
filling very, very quickly. I don't know if you guys can see that over there. Okay, so they're filling up. That's the first one. And typically the different tubes will have different vacuums, and we'll talk more about that uh, throughout the course. The, the, the vacuum in the tube is very important. Um, and what level to fill it to. These ones here have little black lines that we can fill them to. Okay, so once we reach the black line, uh, the next two. So those are the white ones for the liquid pure F. We always draw those ones there first. Now these are the red tubes. Uh, these ones here are meant to produce uh, the membranes. So they clot a little bit faster because they're made out of glass. And of course with all of these tubes, we always want to make sure that there's absolutely no additives inside them. Okay, that's very, very important when we utilize this technology and it's a natural approach, we want to make sure that we're using no additives inside the tube. So both the plastic as well as these glass tubes have no additives at all. And we always recommend that you make sure uh, whenever you're purchasing these tubes to make sure that there's really no additives inside them. Because you'll find with different companies they have different uh, additives. You'll find a lot of silica as one or silicone are the two most commonly utilized additives in tubes. So again, another thing that's important too with these blood draws, um, a lot of people wonder how many tubes can you draw, etc. Each one of these tubes is 10 cc, so 10 mLs. Typically when you go to a blood, blood bank, you're going to give 300 cc's. Okay? So you can literally give 30 of these tubes and that's equivalent to a blood draw. Uh, when I take 8 tubes here from Carlos, this is very, uh, very small amount, so there's nothing to worry about. Um, and you can always inform your patient about that as well. All right, we're on the last one. Carlos has been an excellent patient. We're sitting there quietly. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, when we're done, of course, we already have the machines that are set up, open, ready, on the right protocols. Okay, on this last tube here, I can tell Carlos to open up his fist. Perfect, so that we're gonna decrease the pressure. Of course, we have to take off the tourniquet, okay? And then we wait a few seconds here. And then what we do is we pull this out and push down. So this comes out and then down when you ask the patient, can you hold that? Okay. With the, turn with the butterfly needle right here, there's a little safety feature. You click both of these and you pull down. So that right there is the entire protocol in a video of uh, me doing a blood draw. You can see that, uh, you know, we do a very step-by-step -step approach towards doing this. And again, Within our online system, I provide all of the steps that are required, and this is available for you to download in a PDF file, print it out, you can keep it with it with you, share it with your assistants, etc. Okay, so here we're just gonna go over it again. When selecting between the cephalic and the basilic vein, always remember the cephalic vein is your first choice. So even if you grab the vein light and you're scrolling around the area and you find all your veins and you see, wow, they're about the same size, always remember Below that, the cephalic vein is always a little bit bigger, so aim for that one, okay? Tie the tourniquet three inches above the elbow. Use the vein light. When you find the vein, wipe with alcohol. Make sure you dry. Enter the vein 15 to 30 degrees, okay? At the very end, you're always going to remove the tourniquet. Patient relax the hand, remove the needle, and press the puncture area. So here's the, the steps. Uh, step one, tie the tourniquet roughly three inches above the elbow. And then there's some notes here, and I put these in the PDF file as well. Avoid leaving the tourniquet tied for extended periods of time, okay? When you actually tie the tourniquet, your body is going through, I don't want to call it suffocation mode, but you're blocking circulation. And if you leave the tourniquet on for too long, after a while, uh, your body will adjust and then it'll start flowing again, okay? So always, when you put the tourniquet on, you got to be ready, you got to be ready to go, okay? You got to have all your equipment ready, centrifuge is set. You've already maybe located the vein with the vein finder, tourniquet goes on, and then you go through the procedure. Step two, use the vein finder, okay? Step three, always wipe with alcohol. I've mentioned this already. Make sure the alcohol is dry before entering the vein, otherwise a burning sensation may result. Step five, four, prepare the Band-Aid, okay? And that you're gonna use a little bit later. Step five, you're going to enter Okay, the butterfly needle, bevel facing up, 15 to 30 degrees. Okay, when you enter the vein, you're going to see backflow. So you're going to see a little bit of red blood there, and that's going to let you know that you've entered the vein. Okay, tie the band-aid over top afterwards. 
and make sure the Band-Aid is over the puncture site, not over the butterfly, but really covering the wound. The reason why you want that is because when the butterfly comes out, okay, Band-Aid is going to go down. You want to make sure the Band-Aid is already in the right location. Step seven, okay, you're going to start inserting each of the tubes. Always remember that whenever you put the tubes inside um, the butterfly cup holder, make sure that they're well secured. So you put it in, you hold it, you know, let it fill up 15 seconds, put it to maybe your assistant or somebody else you're working with. Next one goes in and keep, keep it going. Remember that there's a vacuum in there. And sometimes if you go in too slow, remember that the needle that's passing in here, you might lose a little bit of vacuum. And sometimes you see people that work a little bit slower where they go in slowly, you hear a little bit of the vacuum that's being lost. So enter in there quickly, okay? And remember always that you gotta do this within 60 to 90 seconds. So I highly recommend, even if you're an experienced clinician or you have an experienced staff doing this, just for fun, time them one day. Make sure that they're doing it in the right amount of time, okay? While you're drawing the blood, okay, you can always ask your patient uh, to squeeze the ball. Okay, it'll go a little bit faster. Uh, when you're done, always remember, remove the butterfly needle first, then push down on the Band-Aid. Okay, it's painful otherwise if you're holding down. Uh, step 10, okay, you press the puncture area and make sure then to ask your patient to hold it and wait a minimum of two minutes with applied pressure. And afterwards, just engage the safety feature that we've already gone through uh, of the butterfly needle, start your protocol, and then you're essentially done.